bottom. There you go. There it is. Is that bottom? No, that's it. Got it? Yep. All right. Long time coming. This is what I'm looking for, too. Yeah, it's very flavored. Oh. Flying is like a kite. So breezy. I'll probably come this way with him. Okay. Nice size one, too, dude. Just barely hooked on there. There, there you go. We got him. Like I said, he was just barely hooked. Come here. Come well, here. Well, today, guys, we're on the famed Red Lake. It's a breezy day, but we still decided to come out here and see what we could do. Uh, we've been up here since opening day. We actually opened up uh, on opening day. Fought with all the boats. I heard that there was an estimate of about a thousand boats on the lake on opening day, and we still made it. And we were it started off the week with a jig and middle bite, and then last week the jig and middle bite just disappeared. We came out here. We spent a lot of money on bait and just couldn't even buy a fish on a jig and minnow. It was just, we were scratching our heads, trying to figure out what were we doing wrong. And then I decided, you know what? We're not finding the fish shallow. Let's try something a little deeper. Let's also cover more water as well, which I think that's a, a, a huge benefit to what we're doing today, is that we're just covering water. And what we're doing is we're trolling cranks on the bottom side of the, of the break. So we're in that like nine, 10 foot range. And it's actually proven to be a, a really efficient way of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you you look at our rigs here, totally totally different as per usual with the two of us. Yep. Um, go ahead. I'm using uh, UV green, just something bright orange. I want those fish when they go past it. I want them to see it, and I want them to strike. I think that's the thing. Another thing about what we're doing is just that reaction strike. It's not like with a jig in the middle how it's gonna sit in front of their face, they might pack out the tail, spit it out, pack at it again, spit it out. No, when this crank is going past their face at oh, one and a half to two and a half miles per hour, they either bite it or they don't. And when they do bite it, you know they're gonna get hooked. And so I'm using a uh, Rapala, just a UV green uh, shad wrap, and I'm using about a 10 foot fluorocarbon leader, and then I'm using a spinning reel. Dan's yeah. doing something a little different. Again, just for the sake of diversity and finding out what's going to work for us, I actually got the trolling rod out today with the line counter. Um, using lead core, I can fish from 5 feet to 50 with lead core. I, you know, it's really versatile. Um, again, different different color, different style crankbaits. Uh, this one's like a little larger than what you got on there. Yeah. Um, different colored. Uh, but the other important thing about my rig is I've got the line counter on here. Uh, which is great for consistency. Like I just pulled that fish in, I know exactly how much line I had out, and so with the same crankbait, I know exactly where to go back, and you know, hopefully, be able to repeat that throughout the course of the day. Yeah. And uh, you're kind of doing yours more by feel. I am. Yeah. I, I granted that at the time when we caught that fish, I wasn't holding it in the rod holder because it does get taxing to hold it for hours on end in the hand. Uh, but what I'm doing specifically is I'm like using my rod tip and feeling that vibration and then when it starts digging into the sand or the mud, I can or hitting the rocks too, I can feel it on the rod and I know, okay, time to raise up the rod and get it a little bit higher off the bottom. And then when I go for a period, maybe I see on the graph that, oh yeah, we're in 10 and a half feet now compared to nine and a half. I'll lower my rod tip to get that the, the lure to dig down a little bit deeper and I'm doing mine by feel. I'm, it's more guesstimating, it's a little less technical, um, but I mean, I'm still catching fish and it's something that everybody has. Everybody starts off with the spin yeah. reel. Yeah, and it's just, it's you know, a great opportunity for us to show you guys, you don't have to have the fancy dedicated trolling stuff. It's nice, I like it. Um, more than anything, I'm just trying to get more experience with this particular setup because I know I'm going to be using it later in the year when, yeah. when we've got deep water fish. Well, especially with the lead cord too. Yeah. You know, yeah. So very beneficial. I'm, you know, we, we do a lot of experimentation, you know, different color lures, different yeah. rods and reel combos, different speeds. Well, um, I think one thing interesting is that we're doing, our, our lures are vastly different. I'm using the bright, you know, not natural. Uh, but you're using a very natural. Yeah, color, it's, it's actually more of a walleye it's, color. It's, yeah, 
and you know they're both turning fish. Um, so you know, yeah. it's, it's hard to say what they're really keyed in on, but as long as they're both turning fish, you and, know. We're, and it's like it's going back to what I said. We're covering water. You know, we're searching out those active fish. Um, it's a very bright sunny day. It's also getting later in the year. The fish, like I said, on opening day, were concentrated on that first break line, but now they're sliding off. They're not as concentrated. We're trying to find the concentrations of fish. The effective way to do it is by trolling cranks, covering water. Yeah, so, well, let's get back to it and see if we can catch some more. Yeah, it's like I was going to change colors, but now I might just stick with this for a oh, while. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. decent one. Which side do you want to go to? Uh, left it's kind side. of playing it off this way. Yeah, I'll step in here. front of you here and grab it quick. There you are. Perfect. Nice. Ooh. Quick easy <laughs> release. Yeah, not bad. You know, I was, I did have a dead sticking in the rod holder. Interesting. My hand was getting pretty sore. Sure. Uh, yeah, we're just trying out some different lures here. Finally got it on the green UV. Giving that a shot. Just trying to put in a good pattern, trying to figure out what the fish want today. You know, we were out here a couple days ago. They really seemed to like that pink, and the pink didn't really quite seem to pan out so far today. So we're just kind of switching up, doing that. You know, we really find out that one key thing that when we try and find fish and we're struggling to find them, that we do the same thing and we scratch our heads while we're not catching fish. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna release this real quick. All right. We scratch our heads, why aren't we catching the fish? And then we do the same thing again and we're still not catching them. And it's like, we just need to keep switching it. Keep, yeah. And keep, we, we see that so often, yeah. you know, when we're out, we, you know, we, we always keep an eye on other boats. It's just human nature, yeah. and we see so many people that, you know, oh, they were in shallow last week, so let's go pitch jigs in shallow, and then they don't turn any fish, and you talk to them at the boat ramp or what have you, and, yeah. ah, well, yeah, they're just not biting today, and, yeah, here we are out here doing our own thing, yeah. away from the crowds, and, like you said, same, same rules that we always follow, yeah. where... We're not doing the same thing unless it's producing fish. Yeah. There we go. There's the fish. Got it? Yeah. Let me get real big here real quick. I'm right here with an outfit. Alrighty. Coming at you. Another beautiful year size. Yeah, a little younger year. Younger year class than maybe what we're looking for, but it's still a fish. Yeah. Come here, buddy. Nice little one. Get him back in here. Maybe run into him down the road in a few years. So that fish came after what three, four minutes of having a yeah, line down. It was not much. it was just happened to be right there. And what we kind of found out was we did some working out deeper, up shallower. We yep. found a few fish early, you know, out deeper at the bottom of the break, like yep. you were saying. And we got a lot of a lot of other people here that are fishing that are all up in shallows. Now, whether they're doing that to get out of the wind or they're turning fish up shallow, it's hard for us to say. Um, so we did a little cruising. We went from the bottom of the break, you know, up clear up to what, four or five feet of water yeah, in some yeah. cases, and then back down, just zigzagging up and down that break. And trying to get different depths. Yeah, you know. and, and find, you know, trying to pattern where the bite is right now. Yeah. And what we're finding out is, again, 
all the fish were turning seemed to be coming out of right around 10, 10 feet, feet of water. Yeah. And that's down towards the bottom of that break. It seemed like the active fish are holding there. I mean, that's not to say there's not fish up higher. There's probably, you there know, probably tens are. of thousands well, of them up there. The spider, the, or, sorry, the shiners are spawning right now. True. So you True. think that they'd be shallow. Yeah, we saw, we saw some, some uh, bait dealers out earlier pulling traps. So yep. we know there's, there's bait fish that are up shallow. Now, yep. that being said, whether or not those fish are active right now, it's hard to say. Okay. Um, we didn't find any up there. But one thing we did notice out here in the deeper water beyond the break is we're starting to see clouds of bait fish yeah. on the sonar. Yeah. That, you know, we didn't see those on opener. Um, you know, it's just that's kind of a recent thing, too. Now, whether those are shiners that are going to spawn or have spawned or young perch, it's hard to say what they are from the sonar. But I got to believe that if they're out here, those walleye that we're catching are out here for a reason. They, yep. They've got to be out feeding on those fish. So well, the walleyes are just such predators. You know, they follow the, the food. Yeah. You know, that's... yeah. And I don't know. We're, we're starting to starting to develop a pattern. We. Both crankbaits we're using now seem to be working, yep. so yeah. let's just get back at it and see, see what, what else we can find. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Got one. Yeah. I'm coming with the net. Shooting crankbaits. <laughs> still got it? Yep, it's still on. Sneak in here. Ready? Yep. There you go. Sounds like one stayed hooked up. Finally. Yeah. Finally. Got a better, nicer size one here. Yeah. Get them unhooked here. Some pliers. Need to get in there? Yes, please. It's nice to see they're finally biting into things a little deeper than yeah. they were the rest of the day. Beautiful fish. Nice. That one? I think I think so. <laughs> oh, for sure I do. <laughs> Just hit it so lightly. Oh yeah, I can shut it off. <laughs> Just hit it so lightly. I'm still out. That's okay. But if you want, I can net it as well. Or... Feels decent. It's sitting down nicely too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there, let's get it out of the net here. Oh, what did that come on? This came off of a jointed, jointed crank here. Yeah, you know, just a nice little 17 incher. You know, once again, I think the the biggest thing that we're doing today is just cycling through through lures you know and that's and that's what we do when we're not filming when we're fishing for mm -hmm. fun or we're trying to, to put together a pattern that's just how we do it and that's what we encourage people who are new to fishing or you know don't really have anything figured out or even struggling to catch fish mm -hmm. i'm gonna get her back in here real quick thanks girls yeah so many times especially when we were in our formative years yeah <laughs> spend yeah. all day beating yourself up because you can't go in the lake with preconceived notions. Yeah. You know, you can't say, I'm going to Red Lake today, and I'm I'm going to use the spinners to catch the walleye. Mm -hmm. You have to let the fish tell you what they want. Yeah, well, I think that's the most important thing. And I, I mean, being completely honest with you guys, we were on, or I was on here with my dad two days ago, and we were still finding fish in 10 feet, but completely different lures. The lures we started off with today are the ones that we nailed them on two days ago. And I, it just goes to show you how different the preferences can change and that you just can't be narrow-minded yeah. in what you do. You yeah, know? We're just, we're always, always changing things up, always yeah. doing stuff different. You know, we just, we took a little break here, what, 15 minutes ago maybe? Yeah. And we had the conversation, you know, we're turning some fish, but this isn't what we want. Yeah. We got all these lures, let's just keep changing them. Yeah. And we might find that one that's the hot lure and then just have fun the rest of the day catching yeah. fish. And well, it's a beautiful day, windy, but windy. nice and sunny, windy. nice and warm, you know? Yep. So, yeah, and I think, like, once again, just cycling through the lures, just switching it up. Yeah, my, you know? Fine. Something similar to that, maybe. <laughs> There's a fish. There's a fish. Yeah, I got it. Back 
on the windy side of the lake, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it looks like nice one. I'll bring him to you. Okay. There you go, man. Another eater to end the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. Hooks out of him. Stop. This one out. There you oh, go. there you go. Once there again. Go. Once again. Another one that just came hooked. unhooked really fast. But another again that younger year class. Mm -hmm. like by the end of the summer, you know this fish is going to be pushing that slot limit. Yeah. Obviously they're eating. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I think we'll call it a day with that yeah. fish. Um, yeah. You know, again the ending recap. Uh, just to let you know. We're out here, and I mean, look around us at the waves. Yeah. It's like, this is not ideal fishing conditions no. um, by anybody's standards, but we're catching fish. Yep. You yep. know? We are, and we we originally were, you know, a few days ago, we're jigging, and then the jig bite turned off, and then we had to figure out a new game plan, and punted, started trolling cranks deeper than most people, you know, if you look mm -hmm. behind us, nobody's deeper than we are. No, but out in front of us here, we, we've got a series of boats. And again, watching those other boats all day, they're pulling jigs, they're pulling live bait rigs. I even saw some slip bobbers at one point. Okay. And very few nets came over the edge of the boats throughout the course of the day. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, when we were over in the less windy side of the lake, it seemed <laughs> like every time our net came out, we had a bunch of new friends in other boats, and <laughs> yep, yep. It, just, it got to the point there where it's like, okay, let's go see what's on, you know, the windier side of the lake, and there, yeah. there's even quite a few boats here, but uh, looking around again, nobody's doing what we're doing. No. We're out in deep in water, we're pulling crankbaits, and just... Switching crankbaits, trying to figure out, you know... Yeah, and I think we finally, with this color, this yeah. last color, I think we finally, you know, it's kind of a yeah. chartreuse, bright... You know, similar to what you were using there, and you know, I think that that turned out to be, you know, the ticket today. Yeah. And I'm um, using that like same said, chartreuse, similar, and just a chartreuse with darker around it. But uh, yeah, it just it goes to show you that you know sometimes unconventional wisdom can be the ticket. Yep. Um, and don't be afraid to try new things. You know. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's like, the biggest thing. Like the the, the colors. <laughs> progression today we started bright uvs i tried some almost totally black lures um we tried real live forage looking stuff um you know greens and pinks and then i put on that, that silver you know trying to replicate some of the shiners that are spawning yeah and just you know we picked up a few fish here and there on other ones but this, this color seemed to be the one that was working today absolutely and it's just it's it's a shame more people don't come out and just experiment, you know? Yeah. They see what all the other boats are doing, and they want to go do what they're doing, thinking there's a big cluster of boats there. They, they must have it figured out. They must be catching fish, I think, but is what they it's think. it's like you get close enough to watch those boats for a reasonable amount of time, and there's not a lot of action going on. So, like, you, the term we use is, is punt, you know? When it's fourth and long, you got to know when it's time yep. to get the ball away from your end zone. Yeah, exactly. And we're not afraid to just throw caution in the wind. Hey, you know what? Nothing else is working. Let's go faster. Yeah. Like conventional wisdom would suggest, those fish are laying on the bottom. They're not going to eat anything. But you drag something that looks like a fleeing bait fish in front of their nose, and they're, they're munching it. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, we're going to gonna call it a day. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, we'll we'll see you again. We're hoping to get a lot of a lot of good content for you guys this summer and then into yeah. the into the fall, especially when when fishing really picks up. Yep. Um, you know, it'll be it'll be quite a season. It's already been a great season. Oh, yeah. As far as we're concerned. Absolutely. So until next time, I'm Dan and I'm Alex, and we'll see you later. <laughs> Waves or something else. <laughs> <laughs>